Well, we're going to start the next uh, chapter, the uh, urinary system. And we'll spend most of our time talking about the kidney. But the entire urinary system is an understanding of how this system produces urine. Production of urine is primarily by filtration of blood plasma. kidneys that actually um, modify the filtrate and produce plasma. Filtrate is the filtered plasma. Filtrate. Modified filtrate. Produce the urine. We spend the most time talking about the kidneys. Then the urine is transported down um, muscular tube called the, the ureters. Transfer urine to the bladder. So it's the urinary bladder There's different bladders, right? There's the gallbladder, so you should specify urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is another muscular holding chamber for urine. And then, um, when it's time to void your bladder, void, your bladder, you urinate, and urine is transferred out to the outside world via the urethra. Okay. Excretes urine to, um, I'll say, outside world, right? Get it out of your body. So the key organs are um, kidney, ureters, urinary bladder, and the urethra. You can't see the urethra in this picture. You can't see the urinary bladder uh, down below. Kidneys, ureter, uh, bladder, urethra, you can see a little bit of it there. And uh, we talked about the urethra in repro as well because it's the um, Semen and urine share the urethra. And the key uh, function is excretion. This system is the only true excretion system so, uh, where things are in your bloodstream and you filter your blood and you filter it out when you produce the urine and you void your blood and you get it out of your body. Defecation is not true excretion, although some people call it that. Defecation are things that pass through your digestive tract that were never absorbed in the body. Okay. But when something's in your bloodstream and you filter it out of your blood and then you urinate it out of your body, that, that's true excretion. And so um, some of the other bullet points listed here are some of the other key functions of this system. Conserves essential nutrients delivered to the kidney. I mean, if you're filtering uh, your your blood over 
Well, maybe you don't know this. Uh, your kidneys are filtering your, your blood volume something like 70 times a day. Okay, so if, some, if there's a toxin in your blood, the, the kidneys will filter it out. But you don't want to lose everything in your blood to the urine, so you conserve essential nutrients. So what it says conserves, uh, what you're really doing is the, the urinary system, the kidneys can accomplish reabsorption. Reabsorb. And when you do that, you, you take something that's been filtered, you take it out of the filtrate, and you put it back into the blood. Move something, move substance X, whatever it is you're conserving, from the filtrate. You put it back into the bloodstream. That, that's a very important thing to understand. Because if it's filtered, but you don't reabsorb it, you lose it to the urine. So I'll add otherwise, quote unquote, X is lost to urine. So that, that's what conserves really means. The renal artery is pumping all the blood to it. You filter the plasma. You reabsorb what you need and you keep it. And so what you truly excrete is only the body's toxic waste products that you don't want. Second point, you regulate water and electrolytes. Um, let's see. So the best way to um, summarize that is, do you remember studying ADH aldosterone? Those target the kidney. Okay, and you can accomplish salt and water reabsorption there. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, the third bullet point says critical role in acid base balance of the blood. Okay, so what the kidneys can do, for example, excrete hydrogen ions, reabsorb by car. The kidneys can accomplish that. Let's say you do that, <laughs> okay, and you get rid of the hydrogen ions and you put more base in the blood. How's that going to affect the pH of the blood, up or down? It's going to go up, more alkaline. You would want to do that to combat acidosis, right, or, you know, counteract, combat. Okay, let's use the word compensate. I'm going to choose my words carefully. Say for acidosis. Well, I have a whole thing on acid base balance, but you know, the, the reverse is true too. You could flip that. You could excrete the hydrogen ions and reabsorb the bicarb if the pH is getting um, you know too high, you want to lower it. So the kidneys can can regulate the pH and the fourth bullet point is endocrine function. So I want you to think about what we talked about before. Remember the RAS mechanism? We've studied it twice. So if you've forgotten, this is your third time to study it again. The, the kidneys secrete renin. Those come from the kidney. And the other thing is EPO. Erythropoietin targets the bone marrow to increase your crit. And, and both of those things can help to, to increase the blood pressure. And it, it's a good organ to do that. It's filtering all of your blood volume 70 times a day. If blood volume is, needs to be increased, then, um, well, renin and EPO can have an endocrine function. And I already mentioned what excretion is, okay? And so that's kind of an overview of uh, the kidney and what it does, why they're so important. There's a model showing you the basic parts um, we're going to do a kidney dissection, and, um, it's coming up, and when you get a kidney, it's removed from the body cavity. I should mention on that previous picture that um, all these structures are retroperitoneal. It's kind of hard to get to. When I'm on a cadaver, I don't know, I'm always on this side of the cadaver for whatever reason, and um, i got to push all this stuff aside, and I just use my hands, and you can't see them. 
It's not like you put, oh, there, there they are. You have to like dig around. And, uh, the kidneys are held in place quite well by the renal fascia. So let me write that in form. You should know how, they're, how to locate them. Stomach muscle? Like over by the kidneys, like bringing up the kind of move from move back to get to the kidneys? Um, you're talking about this muscle? I guess so. Um, let's see, that's the, uh, I don't know, so as, no. No, you have to tear through the renal fascia, but there's no muscle that you have to go through to get to the kidney. Okay. So let me mention how you can locate them. I always palpate rib 12. We're kind of around there. Yeah, that's how the location. Kidneys. I said they're retro peritoneal by rib 12. So I just palpate rib 12. And then I push all the viscera aside. And then I start like, um, it's usually really fatty on the back body wall. So I start kind of just using my fingers to carefully tear apart renal fascia. Held in place by renal fascia. They kind of secure it to the back body wall. They don't really show you the renal fascia there. It's all over it. But it's usually really fatty. And so you can never just see the kidney. So I'm always tearing through it at about the level of rib 12. And then eventually, I'll start to see something that looks like a kidney organ. And um, when you remove the kidney, notice that it also have, has its own fibrous capsule. So you have real fascia, which holds it retroperitoneally in place. But then on the organ itself, it has a fibrous capsule, two different things. That's not helping hold it in place on the back body wall. It's just covering the organ itself. And if you were to remove it, you just simply have to like tear through the fascia carefully, pop that thing out of the fascia, and then um, cut renal artery and vein in your reader. Okay. So in this organization, um, this kidney-shaped organ, or obviously, this, this part here is the helium. From the renal, renal helum, you should be able to identify three things. Renal A and V, that's two. And then the renal pelvis, which narrows into the ureter. Okay, consider that one thing. Renal pelvis, which is continuous with ureter. Pelvis is just the widest part of the ureter, but it's one structure. Okay. Well, the renal artery supplies the blood, the renal vein drains the blood, and if anything that's excreted will go out the ureter. So you have to figure what's going in. Blood going in, blood going out, urine going out. Okay. The urine will um, you'll produce a, on average about One mil a minute. That, that's about how much urine you produce. That's the rate of urine production. Something like that. It has a max capacity of holding about a liter. I mean, you know what it feels like, too. I mean, you'll start to feel it at a couple of hundred mils. And you got to go, and the bladder can hold about a liter of urine. So. Um, that, that's kind of what you'll get when we do our kidney dissection. We'll, we'll look more about the gross anatomy in a minute. But I want to jump to the microscopic functional unit of the kidney. It's called the nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Whenever you see the term renal or nephros, th those are one's Greek, one's Latin. I can't remember what's what. But they both refer to urine. Okay. I mean, they both for the kidney. 
renal and nephros are kidney references. All right, so the nephron. Now, the um, nephrons, you got, you got about a million of these per kidney. functions that we're talking about here, they, they happen at the nephron level. Okay, that's not the smallest unit where you see all the functions of the kidney. So the first function they list there is filtration. So that's the function, but the structure that is the microfilter is called the glomerulus. So where I'm looking at is where the red arrow is, this filtration there, right there, that's the glomerulus. The term glomer means ball of yarn. So this, this is a capillary bed named for its shape. It's frequently called you know, a tuft of capillaries. So the glomerulus is a capillary bed. Do you ever see the term glomerular capillaries? It's the glomerulus there, by definition, capillaries. But this one's special. I mean, all capillary beds filter, right? They filter out fluid. This one, they filter, and that, that's their primary job, is just to filter your blood plasma. They don't filter the crit. The blood cells are too big to make through the little filtration slits. So we'll, we'll study the uh, glomerulus. Um, all capillary beds filter but not all capillary beds have a capsule around it. So the nephron, the first part of the nephron has this capsule around um, the glomerulus, so it catches all the filtrate that's forced through this epithelial tube. So that's unusual. This has a capsule. surrounded by Bowman's capsule. Now that's an older term, I, I still use it. And um, sometimes they just now call it the renal capsule. But the point is it surrounds the glomerulus. It's catching all the filtrate, right? As you can see, as illustrated. So, Term filtrate refers to it, it's fluid. It's the filtered plasma. All right. The next functions are you're going to modify the filtrate as it passes through this structure, the nephron. You have the proximal tubule, you have the, the, the nephron loop, the loop of Henle, and the distal tubule. Well, anyways, um, reabsorption secretion specifically refer to the moving of molecules either from the lumen to the blood or blood to the lumen of the nephron. Reabsorption. Move from lumen to blood. I said earlier that's how you conserve it. If it's put back into the blood, you won't lose it to the urine. You reabsorb most things. Secretion. Move 
from blood to lumen. So you're either taking it out of the filtrate or you're putting it back into the filtrate. So if you're secreted and not reabsorbed, you're excreted. If not reabsorbed, somewhere along the way, you're excreted. You're lost to the urine. So that's secretion reabsorption. So we can see the functions of things that do that. The, the Bowman's capsule is the part that catches all the filtrate, and then you modify it after the Bowman's capsule. The first part after the Bowman's capsule is referred to as the, the proximal tubule. So let me write that term down. So the nephron parts include, after the Bowman's capsule, we have the proximal convoluted tubule. I always abbreviate that PCT. On this slide, they just call it proximal tubule. Well, it's, it's right here. And it performs both functions of reabsorption and secretion. We're going to talk about that a lot later. And then you go down this nephron loop called the loop of Henle. There's more reabsorption, mostly of water there and some salt. I'll talk about the details of that later. Then you're getting to the end of the nephron. The distal convoluted tubule. Or just DCT for short. That's pretty much the end. And then the distal tubule, by, by the time you get there, there's not much left to reabsorb or secrete in. Um, then you're basically done. You, you can dump into the collecting duct and then still modify the, uh, the filtrate, but. Um, Artilus collecting duct as part of the nephron. Uh, I'm going to put it in parentheses because it's like I don't want you to think that you have one nephron has one collecting duct. The collecting duct is receiving the filtrate from many nephrons dumping into it. It's not like a one-to-one -one thing. So in, in some books you'll read that the nephron ends at the distal tubule and when you hit the collecting duct that, that's not really the nephron, but I'll mention it here. Um, once you pass through the collecting duct and you get out of there, then that's excretion. You're done modifying the filtrate. That's urine. So in this figure, where they put the, the, the E, excretion, that's the first place you have urine there. All right, so um, this picture is a good one to study when you do the sheep heart dissection. You're just going to cut in half. And you can see the internal organization. Um, of the kidney. There's a cortex and a medulla. So it points the cortex like up here, so it's like uh, if I were to trace the cortex, it's like from here, you know, this outer cortex part. It's all cortex. <coughs> so, you have the renal cortex. Now, but the, the inner part, the medulla, is arranged in these uh, pyramids. I'll just kind of trace one. That big thing, there's all these things. And so, um, let me do one more. So 
the cortex is arranged into pyramids. They call it renal pyramid. You can use that term. I tend to call it a medullary pyramid. You even have like spaces between pyramids. Like we'll say right here. Or right here. Okay, and, and that's called the renal column, <coughs> the spaces between the pyramids. And then you have kind of like other spaces, empty spaces, like for example, um, in this space here, or this space here, we have all these other spaces, or this big old space here. Um, they, they call that the renal sinus. The renal sinus is an empty space is usually filled with fat and blood vessels. Fatty. This is showing a lot of blood vessels in there. Now you have your, your urinary collection system. Okay. The urine in this structure, it's going to come out of like, um, it's going to catch it in this little cup. So you're like right here. Right here. Catch it right, right there. The first place you actually see urine produce is at the tip of one of these pyramids. Uh, the tip of a pyramid is a nipple shaped structure called the renal papilla. First place you have urine. And those green cups I, I drew catching the urine are called the minor calyces. Minor calyces. That, that's plural, obviously. Um, minor Calyx, wait, calyx, I don't think I spelled that right, it's K-A-L, calyx, there you go, calyx, calyx. So that's plural, that's singular, calyx. Now they spell it differently on this slide, but I'm not going to use that one because I, I never see it used, I never see that spelling except for this book. So it's usually the L-Y-X thing. Well, anyways, they catch the urine. They're just going to funnel it out of the kidney. I mean, you notice how like um, there's a minor calyx, but there's also major calyx too. Let me pull this back down. So the minor calyces will merge to form like minor minor will form a major calyx. Then the major calyces will go to the renal pelvis. So let's. Um, I noted the minor calyx and then put major. Calyx, then it goes renal, pelvis, then it goes ureter, and then on down to the bladder. Okay, but that, that's just collecting the urine and draining it out. So the calyces and the pelvis, they're kind of like in the sinus. It's kind of like if you dig a hole in your backyard for a swimming pool, a hole in the ground is like the renal sinus. Then if you line it with fiberglass or cement, that represents, symbolizes like the calyces. And I guess the water in the pool represents the urine, right? Uh, well, anyways, when you dissect your kidney, you'll have a better chance to see it. So those are the major regions of the kidney. Any questions on that? So does that mean the renal papilla would be more Yeah, the tip of the collecting duct would be like at the renal papilla. Okay. 
If you could look at the real pillow, like under get underneath it, it'd be like a shower nozzle with all these like little holes in it, and then the fluid coming out of it is like a shower of urine, right? Uh, the renal papilla. There is the model we have in the room. The model also has uh, the blood supply. I want to talk about the arterial blood supply next. Uh, but yeah, that's left kidney, and it's on the shelf. We got like six of them. Okay, here's the blood supply. It starts with the renal artery, but you can see all these branches. So let's follow the branch points. So I'll list the um, arterial, just the names of the arteries on the board that I test on. The renal artery, of course, is one. And then there's all these branches. And the first branches give rise to these segmental arteries. And you don't have to differentiate if it's like inferior, anterior, inferior. Just call them all segmental arteries, the first branches off renal artery. Then if you follow, like for example, a segmental artery, like here's one, a segmental artery, then it branches again. And the branches go in between the lobes or the pyramids. So they call them um, interlobar, here's the term, interlobar arteries is the next branch. So these are, look for them in the renal columns. They go in between the lobes. All right, then let's follow the renal, um, let's, let's follow the interlobar artery in the renal column, say like this one here. That's the interlobar. And see how it branches again? And then it branches and goes over, it arcs over the top of the renal pyramids at the border between cortex and medulla. And those are called arcuate arteries. It's at the border between cortex and medulla. So it's a good landmark to look at. Borders, you know, cortex, slash, medulla. Now, those um, arcuate arteries, let me uh, go to a different picture here. Those arcuate arteries that go, when they go over the top and they're at the border, they get all these little branches coming off. Those are called interlobular arteries. They're also called cortical radiate arteries, AKA, also known as Now, cortical radiate makes sense because they're radiating into the cortex. But I tend to use the term interlobar. It's my personal preference, although if you use the other one, it's acceptable. So I did it, I tried to do it even more close up view, and it gets kind of pixelated at this point. But um, well, anyways, if I tag something in the column, I'm going more for the inter. Uh, low bar, but if I tag it at the top there, what do you think I'm going for? Arcuate. Arcuate. So look where I tag it. I always tag arcuate at the top. If I tag it in the column, I'm going for interlobar. You got to watch where it branches you now. If that's inter, um, I'm sorry, if that's arcuate, what's this one again? Interlobular or cortical radiate. Now, there's little branches coming off. This reminds me of like a Christmas tree or something. Uh, but those little branches coming off are called the afferent arterioles.
So you remember arterioles. Those are the smallest arteries right before the capillaries. Okay. Now, afferent means you're delivering blood to the capillaries, in this case, the glomerulus. They don't really show the glomerulus. Let me see if I can draw this. Let me erase that. If I were drawing on this, I would put the glomerulus like, so right here. Right at the end of the afferent arterial. Then I'll put Bowman's capsule like right around there. Capsule dilated called uh, Bowman's capsule. And what's the first part of that tube called? P, yeah, the PCT one. So I want to draw like a little squiggly tube here. called the PCT. Then the next part is that nephron loop. And um, there, there are long ones. All the way down there. I tend to use the term uh, loop of Henley. Books now tend to call it like Nephron loop. If you see loop, that's your clue. Okay. Then you have uh, the DCT. And that dumps into a big old um, collecting duct. So I just roughly want you to see how the nephron is associated with the cortex medulla thing. So I think what you can note of that little simple illustration is, uh, let me get rid of the blood supply here. What structures are in the cortex? What structures are in medulla? That's, that's what I want to go through. It's doing all the filtration, yeah. It's getting all the blood is ending up there. That is correct. Okay. And filtering through your one million glomeruli. Okay. Anyone got their Christmas tree up early? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Mine's not up yet. All right, so we got cortex, real cortex. Okay, that's where you're going to have Glomerulus. Well, basically the whole glomerulus Bowman's capsule thing, right? Glomerulus. Those are in the cortex exclusively. Okay. You have PCT and DCT in the cortex. Medulla. The medulla has a, a salt gradient. I'll get into that later. It's salty. That helps pull water out so you can concentrate your urine so they don't, so they don't lose a lot of blood, body fluids there. Well, anyways, I'll get into that later. But that's where you have nephron loop and collecting duct. Those structures, because of that salt gradient in the medulla, when you force like a watery fluid through a salty medium, it's easy to pull water out by rules of osmosis. That'll help concentrate the urine. So the medulla has a salt gradient, but you, you got the LOH, lupapenly, and we have collecting duct. Now the collecting duct extends high and low. It's in both the cortex and medulla. I mean, it, it extends all the way up, all the way up through, I don't want to draw on the wall, but 
You have collecting dust in medulla as well. There's a part that's in the cortex as well. So you got to be able to place the nephron in the general structure there. Logical pictures. What does the G stand for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, doesn't it look like a ball of yarn? It really does. What do you think the A stands for? for yeah, arterial after an arterial, that's what you're going for there. So that's taking blood to the glomerulus for the filtration function. Now that's the letter I. What do you think that's I? Interlobular. Now, what I haven't mentioned yet is uh, what comes after the glomerulus. There's afferent arterial, but there's also efferent arterial. Um, let's see here. There's also paratubular capillaries. So in the kidneys, become familiar with this very strange blood supply. So far, you understand the afferent arterial. is supplying blood directly to glomerulus. I think that's where we ended. But then, it's strange. It usually goes arteries, capillaries, veins, right? But not in the kidney. It goes arterial, capillary, and then another arterial called the efferent arterial. strange, you have another arterial. And at the glomerulus, there's no gas exchange. It's another weird thing. Most capillary, this is the only capillary bed I'm aware of where you have this filtration but no gas exchange. So the blood leaving, efferent arterial is oxygen rich, and you feed another capillary bed, it's either going to be paratubular capillaries, On that figure, it's PT. See the PT on the top there? All of those super small, net-like, like a fisherman's net. They call it all PT, but if this is all PT, all this stuff is PT, you do have gas exchange with the PT. Okay. The efferent arterial, depending, may feed either the paratubulars or vasorecta, another capillary bed. So you have three capillary beds, glomerulus, ching, ching, and boom, and boom. Okay. So the glomerulus, no gas exchange, but these other two, you, you can't have gas exchange there. Now, the vasorectal are shown here. They, they show PT, the paratubular capillaries. Now let's, let's start to look at some model renditions of nephron and this blood supply. Now, this one's pretty good. The nephrons and the blood supply, they separated so you could see things clearly. Uh, let's do the blood supply first. Here's my landmark between cortex and medulla. It's the arcuate artery and vein. Um, there's my interlobular artery. I said call it a Christmas tree, and those look like Christmas ornaments, but really they're not. What are those red balls? Glomerulus. So then you know that like the little branch going to it is the afferent arterial. Here's their fisherman's net, what would you call it? Yeah, the paratubular capillary. Now the ones down here, the vasor recta, rectus means straight. So these are straight looking blood vessels down there. So basically, uh, yeah, so the three capillary beds, glomerulus, little round balls, the PT up here in the cortex. Down here in the medulla, that's where you have the vasor recta. All right, so that's the blood supply associated with the uh, collecting system. That's a capsule around glomerulus. That's Bowman's capsule. Don't call that glomerulus. That's not the glomerulus. It's inside there. But if I want you to identify glomerulus, I'm going to point to that. The Bowman's capsule surrounds it. There's the proximal convoluted tubule. There's our nephron loop, the loop of Henley. 
then it goes back on itself. And the DCT, do you see how, how it always ends up by the capsule again? It always does that. Look for that. DCT, and then it connects to this white structure, the collecting duct, all the way down. of the kidney itself. I like to point this out to students. This is the renal papilla, but if you look at it head on, that's it right there. It's like a little shower nozzle, right? So that's the renal papilla, that's the renal papilla, but what's the, the cup that collects the urine? The minor calyx. Now if they merge, if two minor calyces merge and I tag it there, I'm going for major calyx. If I tag it there, I'm probably going for the renal pelvis. But if I tag it way out here, I'm going for the ureter. Okay. Um, here's another picture of the cortex medulla. Well, you tell me, is that cortex or medulla? Mm -hmm. Now, do you see those slight red and blue lines in there? Which capillary is that? Mm -hmm. The vasa recta. It's kind of blurred out, but they show PT up here going from red to blue. There's my arcuate artery and vein. So there's my interlobular structure. It's too blurry. You can barely see the glomeruli there. But you can see the, um, the structures there. If that's glomerulus, this yellow tube must be uh, the, the PCT. Then you have your nephron loop, the white, and then the green. And then that's my DCT. And this orange thing in the cortex and medulla is all collecting duct. So up here you got paratubular capillaries. And down here is where you look for the uh, vasor recta. Okay. Yeah, I can barely see it, but that's my cup. That's my minor calyx. That's the left kidney. And so this is um, kind of what we went through. I went through this already. They start from aorta, and we went all the way through all these structures to glomerulus, no gas exchange. And from efferent arterial, you can either go to paratubular capillaries or vasorectal. That's where you have the gas exchange. And the veins have the same name all the way out. All right, so um, what I didn't mention about nephrons is they come in different varieties. The two varieties I chiefly want you to know are based on like long and short ones. Longer ones are more rare. They're called the juxtamedullary nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons. They're about 15%. They're the ones that concentrate the urine. They have long loops of Henle. That's why they're long. So that's a 15. Mixed up with my Y. 15% long loops. That, that's the one where it's like you see this long loop of Henley. It's extending deep into that salt gradient. Okay, and again, you can't see anything here, but they do give you your landmark arcuate artery and vein. Therefore, below it is what? Cortex or medulla. Medulla, and that's where you have the salt gradient. And then as you force the filtrate down there, you're pulling water out. So that these ones can effectively concentrate urine. More effective for urine concentration. So the shorter ones are called cortical nephrons. Uh, they're the other 85 percent, I guess. Well, they're more numerous, and they're short because they, have, they got short loops. So they're not as effective at concentrating the urine. And I won't even write that, but it's implied. Um, 
reason why there's so few of the long ones is because look where you have to be to be juxtamedullary, which means next to the medulla. You have to be at the bottom. You have to be at the first floor getting off there, right? There's only one first floor. So, you know, it's like you have to be here. You can have many more higher up. You can only have one first floor, but you can have many floors above that. That's why there's more of the, the short ones, okay? So, notice how, can you tell me, I want to see if you can see this, what color is the glomerulus? Why does it stay red? There's no gas exchange. This is vasorectum. What color is that? Purple. Purple implies you're going from red to purple to blue. It implies gas exchange. What are these purple things here? That's the PT. Okay, it's going from red. Okay, see if you can follow my little pointer here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go afferent arterial, red, glomerulus, red, efferent arterial, what color? Red. And then it goes to PT, then it gets all blue, uh, it's purple, then blue. Okay, and um, they kind of show that there. So I, want, I wanted you to pick up on the red to purple to the blue for the gas exchange. Right? Well, anyways, here are our three capillaries that we've noted before. Glomerulus, paratuber capillaries, and vasorecta. Uh, to get into the details of the nephron, I want to go start with uh, the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule and work my way all the way to the collecting duct. The renal corpuscle refers to the Bowman's capsule with the glomerulus inside. I didn't mention that before. Let's get, so let's get into the nephron details. So far, you know, there's long ones and short ones, but. Um, to be specific about each part, let's talk about the renal corpus. So this is where you begin to filter the blood. The renal corpuscle, by definition, is glomerulus surrounded by Bowman's capsule. What we learn from here is that the Bowman's capsule actually has uh, two layers. It's parietal and visceral. Bilayered. It has a, well, I call it number one and number two on this figure. Number one, well, that's the outer layer, that's the parietal layer. This kind of really is the capsule part of the, of the capsule. capsule function. It's catching all the filtrate. It's basically a simple squamous epithelial tissue. Uh, the parietal layer is shown here. They're all epithelial tissues. Simple squamous ET. The visceral layer, that has the filtration function. layer is composed of these podocyte cells. Podocyte cells. What they do is they have these little foot processes. Well, pod means foot, right? These little foot processes, they create these little filtration slits. They interdigitate with like other podocytes and they create filtration slits that, that make the glomerulus a good filter phosphate cells, uh, foot processes, create 
filtration slits around glomerular capillaries. Filtration slits around glomerular capillaries. So know, know the potocyte cell, know the filtration slits, uh, those flow processes, know, know, know it all. I'm going to show it to you on the picture here. But anyways, that's number two. This is the potocyte cell. That's the nucleus of the potocyte cell. Those little foot processes are these little feet, right? Okay, and there's the glomerular capillary on the other side. So this is like the filtration membrane where you filter all the blood plasma. Let's look at a different picture here. This is the picture from the previous slide the parietal and visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. So if you cut the thing open, it's, it's very revealing. What you can see are red blood cells. They're way too big to be filtered out. Those little things, potocyte cells. So again, the one and the two, the parietal layer, and then the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. The visceral layer are the cells. Okay? And you can even see like the little filtrations the foot processes making filtration slit. So it's a very good filter because um, you, you can only filter fluids in very small things. And then so you have um, blood coming in. What was the name of that arterial again? The afferent arterial, the blood going out was the efferent arterial. So what we see about this arrangement, this whole thing called the uh, juxtaglomerular complex, it's very weird. We haven't seen anything like this before. Usually it goes arteries, capillaries, veins. There's no vein here. There's an artery and another artery. And we've never seen a capillary surrounded by a capsule. So on this end, they call this, um, well, the term are vascular and tubular pole. They call this end the vascular pole. They call this end the tubular pole. So they title this figure juxtaglomerular complex. I, I want you to be able to identify number one, the vascular hole. Why do they call it that? Well, on that side, there are two blood vessels, the afferent and the efferent arterial. The tubular pole is um, the PCT. It's the first part of the PCT. It's catching all the filtrate from the Bowman's capsule. And they're, they're trying to emphasize to, to us that this is an unusual arrangement. Usually, on the other end, you don't have a, a tube, you have a vein. Okay? It's not, it's not the case here. Because the, the function is filtration and you're in production. So you want to filter out, you want to filter all the plasma and catch it, and then all along the neckline, you want to modify it to produce the urine. So you don't want a vein over here. You just want to catch all the uh, filtered plasma there. So that's why you have an arterial, arterial on, uh, on one side. Okay. Well, let's take a break, and uh, I, I do want to continue on uh, with the nephron stuff. Come back at uh, 9 o'clock.